Okay, this is my next attempt at this tutorial. The first attempt I kept around so you can see how gracefully Seaside can recover from programming errors. First, let's correct this mistake. That should be initialize. Initialize. And of course, we want to call super initialize so that the class, the super class, will be initialized properly. Super initialize. And we save it. And sure enough, now if we go back and refresh this, well, it already had it. You didn't see. But there's a one there before there wasn't. Trust me. Okay, now let's continue. We're going to create a form. First, we notice we need a handle value method. So let's create one. Handle value method. Getting passed in a value. We're going to create an output variable. Colon equals value factorial. That's going to send the factorial message to the value. Factorial basically takes a number and says multiply it by itself, then by one minus itself, etc. So factor 10 factorial means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, blah, blah. It's a pretty big number. So we save it. And now when we refresh, We get no problems because we forgot to uh, activate this little method. So we'll uncomment the callback. That is to say, we'll uncomment the callback. Now, does it still in red because it's got a syntax there? We want a semicolon there, so there are two messages being sent to this object at the top. So we save it, and now we need to refresh from the start, and we get a walk back. Message not understood. Byte string does not understand factorial. Well, messages or text sent to small talk back from a web page well it's text whereas uh, our handle value is expecting a number so let's go ahead and say as integer that will automatically convert it to an integer save it no errors go back to our original message there we go again now let's try it okay no errors this time so, let's continue. We know that we want to um, show that output. Let's go back to our render form. Small wonder there's no errors. It wasn't saved. Let's try it again. Still no errors. to render form, we see that we are sending the value, but we aren't displaying it. So let's go down a few lines. We're going to display an output value. Well, we don't have an output value yet, so let's just unknown selector, text value.
put a period there. No. I see. That's what's really going on. Let's get rid of that and get rid of that unmatched quote at the bottom. Okay. Now, let's try it. Unknown selector. Still need that little period there. Save it. Now it works. <sighs> okay, so we're according to this, we're going to create a text area with a value of output value. Okay. Let's see what happens if we actually send that. I know we're going to get errors. Okay. Does not understood stand output value. Okay. What does that mean? Still doesn't understand. Okay. That's because there is no such thing as output value either as a variable or as an accessor. So let's go back to handle that. Let's create a variable. Well, we do have a variable, but we don't have an accessor. So let's create an accessor. Factor. Create accessors for it. Yes. All right. Refresh. Sure enough, that's there. If we press accept, nothing happens, but we do at least get one. What if we go to ten? And press. Sure enough, we got it. But notice there's a problem here. It's not updating our value down here. See, it's it's keeping it at ten. So let's see. Output value, value is integer. Well, we aren't changing our input value to reflect what we just did. So let's say input value colon equals value. And in fact, if you look at what the form does, it's going to take the input value, send it back, and then display the output value. And when this, the screen refreshes, it's going to put input value as string, followed by factorial as the name of the button. And it's going to redisplay the input value up here. So let's see if it works this time. There's one factorial. There's 10 factorial. So I think we're done. Took a little while, but we created a form. And despite all the errors, our two instances of this web page are still functional. Now, this specific page might not have been working while we had errors, but other pages that were being served by the same uh, Seaside web server should still have continued because they were each running in their own separate thread within Seaside. So there you have the interactive programming of Seaside serving up web pages. It's a pretty handy little way of doing things.